Hello everyone from a chilly, rainy January day in Seoul. I have made myself vegetable noodle soup, fresh off the stovetop, so delicious, very excited about it. I promised you guys a book video, haven't done one in a very long time, and uh, I'm gonna bring you a book video. I also just noticed that Kurt got paint all over our window. How did that happen? Ugh. I'm going to talk about the one, two, three, four, five top favorite books that I read in 2019. And I also have two shout outs, kind of honorable mentions. So let's just dive right in. Also, before I start, sorry to the people who do watch my book videos regularly. I know I say this every single time, but even though I prefer physical books, I read eBooks because uh, there's more availability and I don't have to buy them. I rent and I use two different apps. One is called Overdrive and then the other one is the little sister of Overdrive called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. If you have a library card, it works for many different countries. You can sign up and then you can rent eBooks. It's a little virtual library. It's wonderful. I've been able to read so much. It is free. Please do so, Libby. This is my, just an iPad. I won it in a contest. I don't know what kind it is. Just a normal iPad. That's my dog. Anyway, let's jump into the books. So I want to start with actually the very last book that I read in 2019. I finished it on December 31st. I spent the entire morning in a cafe finishing it. And it is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. And so I'm sure you've heard about the TV show with the insane cast. I didn't really know what it was about. I thought it was gonna kind of be not like a Real Housewives, but like small town moms fighting, like that kind of thing. And it is, but it has this layer to it that is just really interesting. So basically without any spoilers, it follows kind of the moms and the dads that send their kids to this one school. Um, specifically, all their kids are in kindergarten together. And there is this new mom that moves in and something happens on the first day of school and everyone decides that her kid is weird. <laughs> and all the characters are so funny. Like they all have a very distinct personality. And what's very interesting is that, is that a spoiler? Maybe. All right, so I'm gonna be really vague. There is a crime committed. The way that it's written, you start about six or maybe eight months before this event occurs. So each chapter you see something going on and at the end of every chapter is a short blip of an interview with a detective. So a detective is interviewing the whole town about this crime that has happened at this trivia night. The thing that really drew me in and kept me reading is that you don't know who was affected by the crime, so you don't know who did the crime. Like everybody has a reason to commit it. Everybody has a reason to be harmed. It's a very tangled web. And so it was just a really interesting way to read a crime novel because you literally didn't know what crime was committed until the very end. Um, it was just so interesting. But basically I had very, very low expectations of Big Little Lies and it ended up being a really great way to end my year of reading. It was definitely really good if you're interested in like who done it kind of things. Next up is one that I've already talked about, but you're gonna hear me talk about it again. It is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This was a book that I had high expectations for because everyone and their mother was telling me to read it. My mother, my neighbors, everyone. I think I was intimidated by the length because it's a pretty long book and it basically follows a family through multiple generations during the Japanese occupation of Korea. And I'm not really into stories that span multiple generations. I don't know why. So I was kind of like not into it. And then it finally was available on Libby and I started reading it and I could not put it down. It was so interesting and you learned so much and a lot of it actually takes place in Japan and the there are still so many Koreans living in Japan and the way that their lives it, it just was a really interesting window into history. And especially as Americans, I know, we really don't learn about that part of history at all. It really had nothing to do with us, except that we kind of let Japan take Korea if we could have the Philippines. But so it, it's just like a really beautifully written way to learn about that part of history. And I highly suggest it. Everybody I know who's read it has raved about it. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful book. 
or my suit gets cold. Hold on guys. Okay, so I'm a little bit conflicted about this book as I've talked. Is it snowing? Okay, it's snowing. The writing is amazing. I literally fell into this book like I was totally lost in it and the ending was not my fave. So without any spoilers, it is in the Woods by Tana French. Tana French has a series called The Dublin Detective Squad, I believe. And so um, the entire series is set in Dublin or around Dublin, which is really interesting. I That's kind of what drew me in to read it in the first place. Another thing that's interesting is that throughout the series, and I kind of recommend the whole series, she doesn't follow just one character. So you can totally read them out of order, it doesn't matter. But In the Woods is the first one, so I started with that. And it follows, God, it's been a long time. I've read so many of her books. It follows one detective um, and you kind of learn that he has a traumatic past um, and he's kind of like completely left that behind. He almost did his own witness protection program kind of thing. And his partner, they are investigating this very strange murder. All throughout the investigation, you kind of realize that his traumatic past is really weirdly linked with with this murder. I mean, there are literally scenes where I was so scared that I had to kind of put down my book and look around and like reorient myself to let me know that I'm like safely in my home because she writes so descriptively. There's a scene where he is like in the woods at night and I literally felt like I was in the woods at night with him. Like it was terrifying. I thought the ending was a little bit lackluster and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to not read the rest of her work because I think the rest of it um, is is so interesting. Especially like I think it's the second one. It it reads exactly like an Agatha Christie. Like if you're into Agatha Christie or crime novels or murder mysteries, things like that, um, you'll definitely really like her. Just give her a chance. Don't be turned off by the ending of the book. I still think it was a shock and it was a really interesting twist, but it wasn't, it didn't tie up some loose ends that still keep me up at night. And I think I read that in spring. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just highly suggest Anything by Tana French, pick it up, read it. She was the author that I read the most in 2019. Next up is Brooklyn by Colum Toy Bean. Mm -hmm. I think you guys told me that's how it's pronounced last time. He's actually another Irish writer, and I hope that you have all by now seen the movie Brooklyn, because um, it's absolutely wonderful. Saoirse Ronan's in it. It is oh, one of my favorite films. The movie follows almost word for word um, the novel that it is based off of. But um, the reason why I suggest the novel is because number one, it's beautifully written. If you love the story of Brooklyn, reading it in a book is just as fabulous. But he kind of goes further and ties up the loose ends that the movie didn't. I think the movie left us at a good point for a movie, but um, the way that he ends the book is much more satisfying. It's basically about a young Irish girl who lives in a tiny little Irish town and she is given the opportunity to go work in America, in Brooklyn. And so she takes the boat over, starts her life. Um, she starts going to school. She gets a job in a department store, um, just slowly trying to build her life in America. In the process, she meets a boy named Tony. It's basically just follows their relationship being a, a couple of like an Italian American and then like an Irish Irish girl. Um, it's it's just very, very funny how life unfolds for them. Certain circumstances arise and she has to go back to Ireland. And once she's there, it's kind of this hard decision of, well, hey, I can stay here. Like there's a job for me. There's my, my family. There's the people I grew up with. Like this was always the life that I envisioned I would have. Or I could go to where I know no one and go be with Tony and and try and start this crazy weird life that I'm trying to live in America. If you've ever immigrated, if you're an expat, it's very interesting how they talk about like how easy it is to slip back into to comfort and to just kind of like live two separate lives even. Um, it's just, it's a really, really beautiful story. And yeah, I highly suggest it. If you really don't like to read, I don't know why you're watching this, um, but at least do me the favor of watching the film. It is fabulous. So yeah, Brooklyn by Colm Toybean.
And last but not least, I actually have a physical one of this because I bought it at the used bookstore and I'm rereading it. It is Nocturnes by Kazuo Ishiguro. So I think I listed his book, Never Let Me Go, as one of my favorite books of all time. I made a video, I'll link it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. If, if I didn't, it is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but I had never read his short stories and I'm a big sucker for short stories. I love them. So Nocturnes is actually about, there are five stories of music and nightfall. So kind of throughout all of these stories, the focus is about music or the main character is a musician or something like that. A couple of the characters kind of reappear in different stories, but they're not necessarily connected. The way that he writes is is really beautiful, especially like the very first story. It takes place in Venice and it he really captures it. Like as you're reading it, you really feel like you're there. Um, and I just, I love books that can do that for me. So yeah, if you are interested in trying out some short stories and you liked Kazuo Ishiguro, um, definitely try out nocturnes. So those were five of my favorites, but I do have two shout outs that I want to give. Hold on, soup break, sorry. And so now I have two honorable mentions. So the first one is actually one that was suggested by one of you guys. I wish I remembered who. It wasn't my absolute favorite book that I read, but it's one that I just keep thinking about and kind of like shook me a little bit. It is called The Last and I'm silly and I didn't look up who wrote it. The main character is a man who went to Switzerland for some kind of conference and so he's staying at this hotel and while he is staying at this hotel right before he's supposed to leave nuclear war breaks out fun times so all communication is lost eventually the sky starts to darken because of the like nuclear blast and so the sun gets covered and they're running out of food they kind of like hunker down and just try and live in the hotel with all the other guests but also they discover a body um of a person that was unaccounted for they are trying to quietly so as to not scare the other people him and like two or three other guys um are trying to like also solve a murder while surviving in like post nuclear war it was really interesting and what's weird is i stayed at this hotel in hakone in japan and i swear to god i was the only person in this hotel it was terrifying it looked like it came straight out of the shining and while i was reading this you know how sometimes you put yourself in places you've already seen while you're reading a book in my mind like 100 took place in this ho this hotel in hakone so i just have like these really vivid mental images of scenes from this book and so it kind of like honestly made me look into like survival skill like learning first aid and stuff like that i do that with every apocalypse book i read um i'm always like i'm gonna learn how to make fire and i do and then i forget and i've never actually tried it so i don't know if it would actually work anyway it also is very interesting because it talks about the concept of like the end of the world but in this case the world didn't really end and that's kind of the problem that's why life is so hard is because like the life you knew ended but the world is still here and the world is still going on and there's still people alive um so I thought that was very interesting and it's something that I think about a lot it was a very quick read I think I read it in a couple hours um so yeah I would also suggest the last if you are not uh, very scared of nuclear war, which we all are, but yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, I also have this as a physical copy and the spine is soft. It has been broken many a time. It is <clears throat> Howl's Moving Castle. So I did not know that this was a book until about 2018. It's amazing. You know that Howl's Moving Castle is one of my favorite Studio Ghibli films. The book goes into so much more detail sophie's character and sophie's curse and sophie's sisters they have such a deeper storyline her writing is just like laugh out loud funny i highly highly suggest it it's such a quick read look at it it's like the the lovely old font you used to have in all your favorite kids books it's a real easy read and i highly suggest it i reread it um one like literally one day um I, it was like raining and i was like oh just read this and here I am. So I also would suggest this if you're just in a reading funk. I find that rereading or just reading a simple book um, can really get you back in the reading mood. So if you're not a good reader, 
um, which I haven't been for the past couple of months, I would also suggest Howl's Moving Castle. Okay, that's it. So I had a very good, I think I read 44 books last year. Yeah, I do have a good reads. I will link it down below. You can follow me. I've finished my first book of the year, which is great. Glad I got that out of the way um, because it wasn't that good. But now I am currently reading a really good book and I can't wait to finish it. So um, I'm definitely going to try and do more regular book videos. I've said it before, but I don't like to put any kind of time restraints on my reading because I do like to do it for fun. And there are some months where I don't read at all. There are some months where I read like two books a week. So um, I don't want to promise like monthly book videos, but I do promise to uh, do more of them this year. And yeah, I thank you guys so much for watching. Um, you know, I love the people who love my book videos extra. So um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Uh, let me know your favorite books, please. I have so many books on hold and so many books like currently on my shelf that I need to read, but I am prepared to drown myself even further in a book list and tell me what your favorite book was of 2019 if you don't mind. I'm just gonna go curl up on the sofa with my soup and my book and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!